Good morning children. In the earlier classes, we were discussed about the, the few things. So in the first class, we were discussed about the, the what are the terminologies which is related to the chromosomal behavior, everything. Then, then after we were also discussed about the, the monohybrid cross. Also, in the last class, we were discussed about the dihybrid along with the non-mendelian inheritance. In this class, we will continue the discussion with respect to the very important topic that is chromosomal theory of inheritance. Okay? Fine. Before we are going to discuss about the chromosomal theory of inheritance, let us discuss a few, or I mean the reasons why the Mendel work on principles of inheritance was not remained unrecognized. Okay, so we can also ask this question what are the reasons for Mendelian work on principles of inheritance was remained unrecognized? Like this, we will ask the questions. See, uh, the right side we have given the, the few important words of the Mendelian works. Mines Zip, white, scone, common. That means, while he was conducting the, I mean the Mendelian experiment only, he know that his time has to come. That means, he said that my time will yet come. Okay, the reasons why. See, the communication was not easy in those days. So that means the communication was not easy in those days and his work could not be widely publicized. So that is one of the reasons why Mendel's work remained unrecognized. And also his mathematical approach was new and unacceptable. So before whatever the biologist given, I mean the whatever the different type of the hybridization experiments and all, they didn't use any mathematical expressions, but Mendel's approach of using mathematics to explain the biological phenomena was totally new and unacceptable to the many of biologists of his time. Okay, that is one of the important reasons. Do you remember he used the terminology x plus dy whole square to calculate the, the number, exact number. Isn't it? And also checkerboard and everything. Yes, fine. The next one. The concept of gene, that is nothing but factors are stable and discrete units could not explain the continuous variation. See, whatever he used, that means his concept of factors as a stable and discrete units that control the expression of triads and of the pair of alleles which is not blind, that means it does not mix with each other according to Mendel, isn't it? But was not accepted by his contemporaries as an explanation for the apparently continuous variation seen in nature. See why we are discussing about the last class during the division of Mendelian law. There are other few scientists that try to explain the giving the example of different plant species like burrow clock plant, snap and dragon, isn't it? In those, I mean the species, they show the blending, right? There is mixing or incomplete dominance. So that, that was not accepted. According to Mendel, it will not blend. But, that was not accepted by his contemporaries as an explanation for the apparently continuous variation seen in nature okay and finally the very important reason the Mendel could not provide any physical proof of the existence of factors so generally he told about the I mean the genetic expressions genotypic expressions isn't it but Mendel could not provide any physical proof for the existence of these uh, genes or factors so because of all these reasons, okay, the Mendel's 
work on principles of inheritance was remained unrecognized. But in 1900, the beginning of the 20th century, as I told you in the beginning classes also, there are three names of the scientists. Okay, one is that is nothing but who could have is and corns also one that is to act independently rediscover the Mendelian results okay so as I said actually these three scientists they are all from different countries that is who could have is from Holland Carl Korn is from Germany and Tismark okay that is Tismark from Austria they were conducting various laboratory uh, experiments in different countries but fortunately when they tried to submit the results they come to know that that work was already completed by the mandal okay so that means they have conducted experiments independently and obtained the results similar to those of mandals then the scientific world recognized the significance of the outstanding contribution of the Mendel's principles of inheritance to the understanding the mechanism inheritance. So right the scientific world has honored him as scientist and recognized him as a father of genetics. Okay. So this is the reasons and these are all the reasons why the Mendel's work one principles of inheritance was remained unrecognized okay until 1900 okay so this question they can ask in competitive as well as theory also so that's why so one of the important topic fine so after this one let us start the discussion the chromosomal theory of inheritance okay so this theory that means the chromosomal theory of inheritance was proposed by there are two names of important scientists that is Walter Sutton and Theodore Bovary in 1902 ok so they work out the chromosome movement during meiosis because of the advancements in the microscopy and observe the chromosomal movement Okay, finally, so they generally started observations. The behavior of the chromosomes was parallel to the behavior of the genes and used chromosome movement to explain the Mendel's law. Okay, so they said that the pairing and separation of pair of chromosomes lead to segregation of pair of factors they carried. So, Sutton and Bovary argued that the pairing and separation of the pair of homologous chromosome would lead to the segregation of pair of factors they carry. So, finally, the Sutton inherited the knowledge. Sutton inherited the knowledge of chromosomal segregation with Mendelian principles. It is called chromosomal theory of inheritance okay so this is very important the theory which made a milestone that means in the milestone in the field of genetics okay so according to this what they try to explain the important statements with respect to the chromosome theory and of inheritance as i said the chromosomes are vehicles of heredity ok the chromosomes are vehicles of heredity that means they will carry they will carry the heredity characters isn't it and the two identical chromosome for a homologous space so this is very important homologous means the structurally morphologically the physically they are similar to each other for example here only in this slide they have given just observe almost all the shape and size of these chromosomes they are similar parental that is 
if you consider as a mother or from the father almost all they look like a similar the shape and size okay so during the formation of the gametes what will happen they undergo meiosis there is a number of the chromosomes in the body cells of the species is fixed which is called diploid number but during the formation of the gametes the diploid is get converted into haploid is it they undergo replication then the homologous pair of the chromosomes the forms the sister chromatids of parent chromosomes and you can identify the genes for i color genes for enzyme a consider you can consider enzyme a that enzyme may be how for example we will take a pattern of the skin a light then a color of the eyeball like that we can be considered okay so genes for the cytochrome c like that we can consider and i said what will happen is the chromosomes are vehicles of heredity and two identical chromosomes for a homologous pair the homologous pair segregate during gamete formation let me to explain briefly what are the important points of the chromosome theory of inheritance it was given by the the sutton and bowery the mendelian genes are located on chromosomes isn't it and it is the chromosome which segregate and assort independently isn't it yes the number of chromosomes in the body cells of the species is fixed which is called diploid number that means whatever the somatic chromosomes which is present in our body each and every cells which is containing the fixed number of the chromosomes that is diploid number that to n is equal to 46 do you remember yes there is you know there are 23 pairs means 46 chromosome out of those 22 pairs are the somatic chromosome then the remaining one pair is the that is yes sex chromosomes or we can also say allosomes 22 pairs are autosomes and the remaining one pair is allosome fine then the genes located on the chromosomes that are present in the pair that why said they are nothing but alleles but each chromosome contain a large number of genes the position of the gene on the chromosome is referred to as locus are you able to identify these are all the so that for us says the meiosis and germ cell formation in which a cell with its chromosomes can you able to identify the different phases the g1 is nothing but growth phase first G2 is a growth phase second. Then you can identify formation of bivalents. Also meiosis first, anaphase. Then meiosis second, anaphase. And you can identify the formation of the germ cells. That's the sex chromosomes. Okay. Yes. And here you can identify. the chromosomes and genes how they behave some of the similarities recognized by sutton and bowery between in mendelian factors that's what we call a genes nowadays and the behavior of the chromosomes are as follows you can identify the diagrammatic representation the possibilities okay that means here only i have given the for understanding purpose the textbook diagram along with the the cell divisions consider the possibilities the possibilities one and possibilities two what may be the possibilities happens during the genes are present on chromosomes means they show similar behavior but how it will be yes in the first possibility the two equally probable arrangement at metaphase 1 gives to the different chromosome combinations 
during metaphysic in the formation of the gametes you can identify the combination one the combination two one can in case of the possibility two there will be possibility same as it is two equally probable arrangements with the metaphysics give rise to the different chromosome combinations that is metaphysics second there is a formation of the gametes combination three and combination four this are you able to identify can you see how the chromosome segregate when germ cells are formed Yes. Before we are going to the discuss about the chromosomal theory of inheritance, which is given by the Thomas and Morgan, let me to tell you once again the comparison. Okay, the comparison between the behavior of the chromosomes and the genes. You know, they can ask the question like this also. The compare the behavior of the chromosomes and genes. So that you can say the chromosomes how they behave. The chromosomes occur in pair. Even genes also occur in pair. Okay, then what about the chromosome? They segregate at the time of gamete formation, such so that only one of each pair of is transmitted to a gamete. What about the genes? segregate at gamete formation and only one of each pair is transmitted to a gamete the third one very important comparison independent pair segregate independently of each other yes one pair segregate independently of another pair so these are all the the comparison between the behavior of chromosomes and genes okay that can you can identify in each an individual in the particular stage of the meiosis also that's the meiosis first anaphase the meiosis second anaphase the formation of the germ cells the possibility of the first one the possibility of second one so finally independent assortment of the chromosomes okay yes so after this one as i said the chromosomal theory of inheritance this theory actually the thomas and morgan work with the fruit fly commonly known the drosophila melanoglaster to provide the chromosomal theory of inheritance okay so that means the chromosomal theory of inheritance was experimentally proved by Thomas and Morgan, or short formally known as T. H. Morgan, and his colleagues. That means his colleagues actually. The Morgan worked with a tiny fruit flies, commonly known as the Drosophila melanogaster, popularly known as Cinderella of genetics. Okay, which were found very suitable for such studies in those days. But the question arises: Why the Drosophila flies are ideal for experiments? Or we can ask the question, or in examination they can ask the question also: Why the T. H. Morgan selected only Drosophila flies? not any another insects instead of drosophila the reason the why drosophila flies are ideal for the experiment that means that drosophila is suitable material for genetic studies because they can grow on simple synthetic medium that means they can they could they could be grown easily on synthetic medium in a laboratory they complete their life cycle within 15 days the short generation time that means the life cycle not more than 12 to 14 days and also a single mating can produce large number of progenies 
That means hundreds of thousand is per mating. Very important one. The breeding can be done throughout the year. Fine. And also, that means the male and female flies are easily distinguishable. The exhibit sexual dimorphism. That means the clear differentiation between male and female sexes. That means the males are smaller than females. Okay, females are larger than males. Many hereditary variations can be seen in microscopes only. Okay, see, uh, they generally, whatever the size of the chromosomes, so they are commonly in the gigantic chromosomes, those can be easily observed under the common microscope cells. Fine, and they have limited number of chromosomes. That is 2n is equal to 8. Okay, so it has a many types of hereditary variations that can be seen with low power of microscopes also. Because of all these reasons, we can say the Drosophila flies are ideal for experiments and also the Drosophila is suitable material for genetic study. Because of all these reasons only, T.H. Morgan selected Drosophila. Okay, and you cannot uh, believe that if you observe keenly, uh, physically only, half of the uh, I mean, Drosophila menoglastra will be containing the I mean the male character half of will be look like female. You know, how in generally in Karana there is a terminology urban Arishvara. So that means if you would have observed in the photographs of the Ishvara, half of will be like the male and half of will be female. That means half of will be Ishvara and half of will be Parvati, right? So like that exactly look like this organism. So that's why, you know, so this is commonly popularly known as the symbol of the genetics. Okay, fine. So after this one, there is an uh, important topic, linkage and recombinations. What is the linkage and recombinations? See in the question, the linkage is a physical association of two or more genes on a chromosomes. What happens actually, after the formation of the gametes, they undergo fusion, isn't it? When they comes in contact of each other, that means a linkage when it will be happens when they comes in contact of physical association. One maternal chromosome, another one is a paternal. So that means N half of the chromosomes and again N during the formation of the that means the fusion of the zygote, they form the physical association. What will happen then the linked genes do not show independent assortment. The recombination is the segregation of the non-parental gene combinations. Okay, the recombination occurs due to independent assortment or crossing over. You can ask me, sir, what is this actually exactly? So as I said, the genetic studies after the Mendel revealed that some of the genes do not follow the law of independent assortment during the formation of GAN. Isn't it? Do you remember then? So this is because these genes are present on the same chromosome and are transmitted as a, a single unit. Hence, the presence of two or more genes on the same chromosome are said to be linked genes and their pattern of inheritance is called linkage. Okay, so then, so that means the linkage is the, we can also say, the tendency of two or more genes to remain together in the original combination of the same chromosome from generation to generation. So that's what I said, the linkage is the physical association of, that is, chromosomes. Okay, so that association of two or more genes on a chromosomes. The progeny have a parental gene combinations. 
the devotee yes and the very important one there is the linkage in circus in the chromosome that is the chromosomes and life in the linear sequences the strength of the linkage between two genes depends upon the distance between the genes on the chromosomes okay so and also you should remember there are two types of the linkages namely complete and incomplete linkages so what is a complete you can ask me so what is a complete linkage and what about incomplete complete linkage if the two genes are placed close to each other and are inherited from a number of generations is called complete linkage here there is no crossing over and recombination of the genes as i said the young ones inherit only the parental characters but this condition is very rare okay that's what we call complete linkage then the another one is incomplete it is when two genes are placed far apart they separate due to breakage of chromosomes that is a crossing over okay so during the formation of the gametogenesis this leads to the appearance of new combinations that's what it is given here the diagrammatic representations you can identify clearly how the tightly linked genes which is present on the chromosomes which is near to each other linked genes what about they are placed very far okay so then homologous chromosomes aligned like this then after the chromosome crossovers finally recombinant chromatids okay non recombinant chromatids so let it be because the uh, recombinations based on this recombination the morgan x chromosome doll we will discuss in the next class okay yeah thank you have a nice day